Welcome to all-time NFL imperialism. Here I have a map of every NFL team, and every team has the greatest players to ever play for them on their roster. It'll start off with me spinning a wheel that will randomly select one team, and then an arrow which will point which direction that team will go. So right now, the Baltimore Ravens will travel to play the Philadelphia Eagles, and whoever wins this game gets all of the loser's land. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens currently down by 10 late in the fourth quarter. Can he lead them to a comeback? Unfortunately, Madden's pretty stupid, so the Ravens don't seem to be very urgent right now. And it shows as Baltimore is really taking their time matriculating this football downfield. Of course, the strong suit of the Ravens historically has been their defense, but it's their offense that needs to step up right now. And it's the Eagles defense that makes the big play. Brian Dawkins with a game ceiling pick. So the Ravens are going to be the first team eliminated. And to reward them for their victory, the Eagles get one player of their choice from the Ravens roster, in this case, Ray Lewis. And in case you were wondering, there are no duplicate players, meaning Tom Brady is only going to be on the Patriots, Peyton Manning only on the Colts, etc. And as always, I want to give a big shout out to Dean's World, the main inspiration for these videos. I highly recommend you guys check out his imperialism videos and the rest of his content too. It looks like the Eagles are going to be immediately challenged for their territory by the Redskins. And so far, they've done a good job defending their home field as they currently have a seven point lead. Donovan McNabb already has them inside of the red zone and a touchdown would really put this one away. The Redskins have used their first two timeouts now off of the play fake and they're going to get to McNabb and use their final one there. This Hogs defense needs to make a huge play on third down and they don't let that run go anywhere. But Philadelphia is going to bleed this down to about a minute and make it a two score game. So once again, the Eagles have a 10 point lead late in the fourth quarter here and they're going to get to Sonny Jurgensen. That's the fifth time they've gotten to the quarterback today. Day, there's a reason Philadelphia has been winning early on. What a strong start for Philadelphia in this imperialism. Starting off with back-to-back -back wins and getting another great defender. Two turns in and it already feels like the Eagles are the favorite to win it all. But of course, there are a ton of teams that we haven't seen yet. And we're going to see two of them right now in the NFL's oldest rivalry. And this one's coming down to the wire. Knotted up at 21 apiece here just inside of two minutes. Third down and the Packers are going to get the stop. So Aaron Rodgers has a minute 48 to get Green Bay into field goal range and that's a nice way to start off the drive just over a minute 20 left to go now rogers going five wide wide open over the middle it's aaron jones making the reception getting out to midfield under 50 seconds left to go green bay needs 10 yards to get into field goal range and rogers loses the football it's picked up by chicago william the fridge perry's gonna take us as a scoop and score the bears have a late lead unbelievable william the fridge perry out of all players the one with the scoop and score on Aaron Rodgers quite possibly for the win and that is somehow Green Bay's fifth turnover of the game and let me tell you as a Packers fan that play really hurt to watch but despite all the mistakes Green Bay still does technically have a chance Aaron Rodgers letting that one fly that's a great catch and a late flag that's going to be a personal foul unnecessary roughness I think okay so getting a touchdown here isn't too crazy now after that penalty they're down to the 24 yard line and Don Hudson's going to get them in touchdown green bay we're an extra point away from being all tied up what an insane turn of events well it looks like we're headed for overtime right now but the way this game has been going who knows chicago has the ball with 16 seconds left jay cutler's gonna dump that one off to matt forte and there's a flag out is that gonna be holding on the offense it's going to be a face mask on the defense, actually. That's going to get them a good chunk of yardage. And now I'm nervous again. Chicago just outside of field goal range after that 15-yard penalty. Jay Culler letting that one fly, and that's going to put them into field goal range. No! This is going to be Robbie Gold from just about 50 yards out. His kick is going to be up, and it is through. So with just one second left on the clock, Chicago's going to kick this one off to Randall Cobb. He needs to have a big kick return touchdown, and he's going to get absolutely nothing. And with that, the Chicago Bears win one of the craziest games in NFL imperialism history. Well, I think that game really lived up to the hype of being the NFL's oldest rivalry. It really seemed like it there. And I guess I'm going to have to get used to seeing Aaron Rodgers in another jersey. This is got to be the most wild start to NFL imperialism maybe ever. Next up, we've got the Chargers. Where will they be headed? Looks like we're going to be seeing the battle of LA between them and the Rams. Remember, a lot of these Rams were part of the greatest show on turf, and it really showed today as they blew out the Chargers. Well, the Rams are the team that's been in LA the longest, so it makes sense that they get all of it. And along with all of LA, they also get Junior Seau. And here's an updated look at the map after the first four games. I feel like we've had some nice games to start off this imperialism. And 
and I think the Colts are going to be a juggernaut in this. Their first game is going to be against the Bengals, and they're threatening to take the lead here with two minutes left. That first and goal run went nowhere. Now Manning's going to throw that one, and it's going to be caught off the tip. But will it count? There's a flag on the play. Ineligible man downfield, so that's going to back them up. Second and goal from the six instead of from the one. There's a flag down again. Peyton Manning gets them back down to the one-yard line. But is that play even going to count? No. Back-to-back -back penalties on the offensive line put them back to the 16, and there's another flag down. Is this going to be another hold? call wow three straight penalties on three different offensive linemen back them all the way up to the 26 yard line how aggressive do they get third and goal from the 24 yard line they're just gonna run it and get just across the 20. Cincinnati stops the clock with a minute 17 left as Adam Vinatieri gives the Colts the lead so now Carson Palmer has just over a minute to get Cincinnati into field goal range and that's a bad start if he's gonna check it down to you like that you have to hang on to it and now Corey Dillon's going backwards not an ideal start to what Cincinnati Cincinnati wants to be a game-winning drive. Now Carson Palmer is going to throw the one back across his body, and it's going to go pretty much nowhere. Three straight bad plays from Corey Dillon leads to fourth and seven, and the clock is continuing to tick inside of 20 seconds now, and Palmer is going to be intercepted. That's going to be the nail in the coffin, and the Colts are going to eliminate the Bengals, and they're going to improve their offensive line with Willie Anderson. So far, we've only seen games between teams, nobody taking any unclaimed territory, but the Cardinals have a good chance of doing so here. And that's exactly what they're going to do, taking Utah. And this time, instead of just boosting a random player on the roster, whenever a team takes unclaimed territory, their quarterback will get a two overall boost. So now Jim Hart is up to an 84 overall. And the Cardinals were one of the teams that really did need a boost at quarterback. They haven't had a lot of great ones in their history. But a team like the Patriots, they've had one or two good quarterbacks in their past. And it looks like they're going to get even better as the Patriots take Connecticut. And even though Brady was already a 99 overall there's still a little bit of room for improvement one of those teams really needed an upgrade like that the other not so much and next up we've got the Raiders I know it says Oakland but I put them in Vegas but the rivalry between them and San Francisco is still very real and I was not expecting the Raiders to win this game much less blow out San Francisco what happened to Joe Montana and the offense they just didn't show up today and this is now the second time that the Raiders have upset the 49ers in imperialism well I guess it shows who really owns the battle of the Bay. I know the Raiders have a rich history with a lot of good players, but so do the 49ers. I was really expecting Joe Montana to step up there, but instead the Raiders might now have the most land. And on top of it, they now have one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. I don't know what it is, but it feels like the 49ers have been cursed by the Raiders in these videos. Next up, we have another team with a lot of rich history, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And once again, Philadelphia is going to get tested. This time they find themselves down in the fourth quarter and they just gave up a big run to Franco Harris. The Eagles are starting to use their timeouts now Franco Harris with another run goes nowhere the Steelers trying to run out the rest of this clock they give it to Franco Harris again and he's gonna be just shy of the first this is a huge third down Philadelphia all out of timeouts and the bus puts the game on ice and I guess third tries the charm when it comes to taking down Philadelphia and Pittsburgh's gonna add Reggie White to an already stacked defense so Philadelphia tested a lot early and they finally do fall and that's kind of just what happens when you're surrounded by a lot of teams and Tom Brady's just going to keep getting better as the Patriots grab Rhode Island. Of course, he's already a 99 overall, but now almost all of his passing stats have been maxed out. And the Patriots are already pretty stacked as is. So whenever they actually play, I think they're going to go off. The Vikings are now up for the first time today, and they're just going to go down south and grab Iowa. And that's going to improve Fran Tarkington to a 99 overall. Back to the wheel we go after seeing a couple of teams just expand, and now we're going to see the Cleveland Browns. They're the only team standing left in Ohio. Ohio, and we're going to see what they can do against the Colts. And we've got a good one here in the fourth quarter. Otto Graham has them in field goal range, but he wants the win. Connecting with his fellow Hall of Famer there, Ozzie Newsome. He's looking to throw again, but they get to him. That brings this down to under 50 seconds left to go in the game. He's going to dump that one off to Jim Brown, who gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Under 30 seconds left to go. Now Cleveland still with all their timeouts. Otto Graham firing that one to the end zone, and it's going to be dropped. Jim Brown had to go right off his hands. And so 
so now the Browns are going to have to settle for a Phil Dawson field goal. Indianapolis is going to get the ball first here in overtime after the play fake. Peyton Manning has Reggie Wayne downfield. That's a good start for them in overtime, but now they face a third down, and they're going to convert it. The Sheriff connects with Reggie Wayne again, and now they're on the outskirts of field goal range. That pass in the flat's going to get them down to the 20. This Indianapolis offense has been moving the ball very efficiently, and that's almost another first. This Browns defense is trying to hold on for dear life, but Peyton Manning and company might just be too much for them. He's got a clean pocket here to the end zone, and the Colts take this one. A valiant effort by the Cleveland Browns, but they fall just short. And now the Colts have all of Ohio, and they're going to add Jim Brown to their backfield. Of course, with this being all-time teams, pretty much everyone is overpowered, but the Buccaneers are probably one of the teams that are on the lower end of things. And the Arrow's going to have them going against the Jags. Neither of these teams have a super rich history, but the Jaguars do take care of Jameis Winston's Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's one team in Florida eliminated, and Jacksonville's going to add Derrick Brooks to their already loaded defense. So back to the wheel we go, still a lot of teams that we haven't seen play yet, and we're going to be sticking in Florida with the Miami Dolphins. And it doesn't really matter where the arrow goes, as there's only one team they can play. And of course, that is the Jacksonville Jaguars, so we're looking to put together a fourth quarter comeback. They trailed by as much as 17 today, and they need to pick up this fourth down conversion, and they got it! Jimmy Smith with the catch of the game, and now Mark Brunel's tying it up. But did they give Dan Marino too much time to work with here? Off the play fake, and that's an easy first down. They use their first timeout with about 30 seconds left to go. Marino to the right side, and that's going to pick up about seven or eight yards. Bringing up third down and three. They're going to run the draw play, and they're going to pick it up. They bleed the clock down to five seconds. Marino looking for the Hail Mary here. Hucking this one to the left side, and it's going to be picked. So we're going to have ourselves yet another overtime game. The Jags get the ball first to start off the extra period, and Fred Taylor is nearing 100 yards rushing. And now Jacksonville is just inside of the Dolphins' territory, but MJD gets stuffed. And that's going to give the Dolphins a chance to go downfield and win this thing. On third down, Marino slinging that one deep, and it's going to be ruled incomplete. He must have only had one foot in bounds, so the Jags are going to have another chance to go downfield and win this. But once again, they're faced with a third down near midfield, and again, they can't convert it. Dolphins with the football back, Dan Marino's going to step up in the pocket, and he's got McMichael downfield. The Dolphins now in long field goal range, and Larry Zonka picks up a few. Big third down here for Jacksonville's defense. It's going to be a play fake. Marino looking to throw downfield, out of bounds. From about 50 yards out now, Orlando Mare for the win. It's good. And the Dolphins will claim all of Florida, and they're going to take Tony Bozelli with them. Now back to the wheel we go, and we're going to get the Dallas Cowboys. That's the first time we've gotten a Texas team today, and the arrow is pointing them towards New Mexico. So along with claiming that, Roger Starbuck's also up to a 97. It seems like we've now gotten a good mix of teams going against each other and also teams claiming some land. And for the first time today, we're going to see the Carolina Panthers. They're also going to claim some land, uniting the Carolinas and upgrading Cam Newton to an 89. So another team just going out there and upgrading their QB. And we're getting another new team here with the Tennessee Titans, who are immediately going to challenge the Carolina Panthers with their newly upgraded quarterback. We've got a close one here in snowy Carolina, as the Titans currently hold on to a two-point lead looking for the stop on third down, and the Panthers get it. So that's going to give Cam Newton a chance to lead his team downfield, but he can't be doing that if he's taking sacks. It's third down now with about a minute left to go, throwing that one on the run to CMC, who gets tackled shy of the first. And of course, they have to go for it on fourth and three. Newton to his right is going to be intercepted, and the Titans are going to hold on for a win, adding insult to injury. Greg Olson really just let that bounce off of him, and Tennessee's going to take all of the Panthers' newly acquired land, along with Luke Keekley. Here's an updated look at the map, and we're going to get right back at it here with the wheel. Another new team right here with the Buffalo Bills, and that arrow's sending them to play Pittsburgh. And it looks like we've got another great game here, tied up at 22 apiece. Roethlisberger going deep, incomplete, but there's a flag down for pass interference. A huge penalty there, as that puts the Steelers in field goal range. And now Pittsburgh might just try to run out the rest of this clock. They're going to run it again on third and six, and get stuffed. So that's going to force them to settle for three. Jim Kelly has a minute 17 to get them into field goal range. He's going to huck this one downfield and he's going to be picked off. And that just looked like a bad overthrow. The Steelers continue their dominance and they also continue to add on to their defense. They already had a great defense and they've added on Reggie White and Bruce Smith. The Rams are up now. Last time we saw them, they beat the Chargers and now they're going to take on a former LA team in the Raiders. And they've struggled a lot more in this game than in their game against San Francisco earlier, but Montana slinging it downfield. 
field. And they're going to hurry up now out to the 44 yard line. Nice catch and another first. Again, going no huddle now. Montana drops back, launches that one downfield, and it's another first down. Under one minute left to go. He's going to be going five wide here. Over the middle, picks up eight. They use their first time out with 30 seconds left to go. Montana under pressure and he goes down. Jack Youngblood with his second sack of the day. And things are looking pretty bleak for the Raiders. As the clock runs out and the Rams knock him off. All of a sudden now, the Rams have the most land on the West Coast, and we're going to improve their offensive line with Jim Otto. It seems like the attacking teams are winning most of these games, the Miami Dolphins being one of them. They can only really go one way, and that's up to the Falcons. And after going back and forth for the first three quarters, it looks like the Falcons are pulling away. A touchdown here would really put the game on ice. Let's see how aggressive they get. Off the play fake, Matt Ryan loses the football. It's going to be recovered by Miami, looking for the scoop and score. Can they get it across midfield? I don't think they're going to catch him. Jason Taylor is gone. Cameron Wake with the forced fumble of his life. And Miami's going to go for two to make it a three-point game. Marino's got it. And now the Dolphins need the onside kick. And they don't even have a shot at recovering that. All the Falcons have to do is not choke this game. Which I guess for them is easier said than done. They are going to be able to run out most of the clock here though. Unless Matt Ryan throws a pick. He doesn't. And that's going to be shy of the sticks. And that should be be enough to bleed down the rest of this clock. Falcons fans everywhere are breathing a huge sigh of relief. Because if they had choked again, they would have never heard the end of it. Instead, we are now all out of Florida teams. And up again are the Tennessee Titans. They're headed out southwest, and that's going to give them Alabama. And upgrade Warren Moon up to a 93. So that's going to very quickly bring us back to the wheel, where the Titans get landed on yet again. This time, they're headed northeast and taking Kentucky. So once again, Warren Moon gets upgraded, and the Titans are just stretching in every direction now. Getting Tennessee back-to-back -back times now, but there's still plenty of teams we have yet to hear from. We've heard from Pittsburgh several times and they look to continue their dominance now. That arrow's close to West Virginia but not quite so they're going to be playing the Colts. And for whatever reason Indianapolis didn't show up in this battle of storied franchises. Instead the Steelers expand their land and they add on to an already stacked receiving core. So another historic franchise with a rich history goes down and no matter where this points there's only one team the Falcons can play and that's because they're surrounded by the Titans. And once again it looks like we're in for a good ending. Warren Moon is going to be sacked on first down. And that would make this a long field goal if they had to settle for one from here. Here's a third down and 11. They're just going to run the draw play with CJ2K and the Titans are going to be forced to settle for three. Meaning we've got ourselves yet another overtime game. Tennessee gets the ball to start off overtime but Moon's going to get sacked on third down. The Falcons have an opportunity now to go downfield and win this with a field goal but they can't even get the screen pass off. We have just gone back and forth trading possessions in overtime. Warren Moon's going to throw that one to the right and he's going to be intercepted. Oh my gosh the Falcons looking for the pick six. It's going to be just short. It's not going to matter though. All they need is a field goal and the Falcons win. So Atlanta wins the battle of teams with a solid yet disappointing history. And to reward them, they're going to get Earl Campbell. And man, these overtime games at Madden are just brutal. The CPU's clock management makes Nathaniel Hackett look like a Hall of Fame coach. Anyway, now we've got the Rams taking on the Cardinals. And this one wasn't even close. Jim Hart couldn't even get the Cardinals into the end zone. So now the Rams by far have the most land. And the add-on to their receiving core with Larry Fitzgerald. We are just past the halfway point now. Only 15 teams remain. And for the first time, we're going to be seeing one of the New York teams. Well, we're actually going to be getting both of them in the Battle of New York. It's been a pretty low-scoring game so far, but Joe Namath trying to lead the Jets on a comeback. But it looks like it might just be too late for that. He's going for six on this play, and that's going to be picked off. So it's looking like the Giants are going to win the Battle of New York. So the Giants are going to be making the slightest of expansions and improve their secondary with Darrell Rivas. Back at it again with the wheel and the Chicago Bears are up next. They had a crazy game against the Packers last time around and now they're going to have to play the Chiefs. And the addition of Aaron Rodgers really seemed to have helped them keep up with Kansas City's high-flying offense. But after that missed throw, the Chiefs are going to have a chance to win this one in regulation. Mahomes launching that one deep and he's got him! Jamal Charles is gone! And just like that, the Chiefs strike. Well, Nell Rodgers and the Bears really have to do something on offense.
offense. But taking a sack is not going to help their cause. Quick throw from Rodgers is not going to go anywhere. And that makes this third down and long. Quick throw is nearly picked. And they have to go for this fourth and 18. Rodgers got a clean pocket. He's going to sling that one downfield. Knocked away. And the Chiefs are going to hold on to this one. I thought that Aaron Rodgers would have been the missing piece Chicago needed to go all the way. Instead, the Chiefs start their conquest. And they put together one of the greatest linebacking cores ever assembled. So down goes yet another historic franchise. And now for the first time, we're going to see the Denver Broncos. The arrow sends them directly south, meaning they're going to take on the Cowboys. This is the first time we've seen either of these teams play, and the Broncos are in a little bit of a pickle. Elway downfield converts the third and 25. And the Broncos go hurry up. Elway trying to lead a game-winning drive here. Time in the pocket. He's going to dump that one off in the flat, and his fullback's running the wrong way. That's going to be a huge loss of seven. Elway dropping back to throw again. Again with a clean pocket until it's not. And for the second time on this drive, they face a third and 25, and it's going to get even longer now. Elway is sacked again. Three straight plays going backwards leads to a fourth and 30. Elway misses on the throw, and the Cowboys are going to win. So the Broncos are going to go one and done, and now they're going to lose Von Miller. The Cowboys finally winning a game in an imperialism video of mine, and for the first time today, we're going to see the Saints. Directly above them is Arkansas, so they're going to take that. And even though he was already a 99, Drew Brees gets up Upgraded. Almost all of the blue teams now are clumped together on the wheel, but we're not going to get any of them. We get the Saints again. Maybe they're trying to do what the Titans did earlier and just upgrade their quarterback, although that didn't really end up working out for them. Drew Brees is now pretty much maxed out in every passing category, and maybe the Saints are getting ready to attack. First time we've gotten the Detroit Lions today, and they're going to go out and challenge the Mighty Steelers. And of course the Lions are losing the game where the score is 0-16. Their defense has done a fantastic job today, only allowing one touchdown, but they're offense led by Barry Sanders and Megatron has done absolutely nothing and the Steelers are going to get out of this one 16 to 0. As usual a disappointing performance by the Lions as the Steelers continue to add on to their already stacked roster. So another team goes down but there's still a lot of blue on this wheel and up again are the Saints. Will they actually attack this time? Yes they will as they're headed out east to take on the rival Falcons. Well I'm not sure if all that upgrading of Drew Brees is paid off as the Falcons are up by 16. If the Saints want any kind of a chance at a comeback here they need to get the stop on third down but even with that a Matt Bryant field goal makes it a three possession game and so ultimately Drew Brees and the Saints are gonna fall short the Falcons take down their rivals with relative ease and they're going to improve their offensive line the Saints tried the same thing that the Titans did and ultimately they fell to the same fate once again the Steelers are up and this time they're just gonna grab West Virginia Big Ben gets upgraded to a 95 overall and just like that we're back to the wheel with only 10 teams remaining first time the Chiefs have been selected by the wheel and they must be feeling confident because they're going to be challenging the Steelers and currently Kansas City trails by seven Mahomes is under pressure and he's going down the steel curtain has been holding strong today Mahomes steps up in the pocket spins around and he's nearly picked so that brings up third and long Mahomes looking to throw going deep and knocked away and even though they have all their timeouts they're going for the fourth and 17 Mahomes lets it fly and it's going to be picked actually a good interception for the Chiefs though as that's going to give the Steelers some worse field position but their defense cannot give up a first down here and that's exactly what they do the bus gets across the 50 and if the Steelers play this right they can run out the rest of this clock and that's what they're gonna do the bus with another first down they're not using Barry Sanders to run out this clock but I guess it doesn't really matter because they're gonna knock off the Kansas City Chiefs and they're gonna go out and take Tony Gonzalez from them there are still four teams left that we have yet to see play and instead of getting a new team we get the Rams again and that arrow is gonna point them to Wyoming and that's going to upgrade Kurt Warner to a 97 overall. So very quickly, we are going right back to the wheel where we finally get the Seattle Seahawks. Now there's no team that they can play, but they can grab some land and that's what they're going to do with Oregon. Russ is now up to a 94 overall. And again, we're going to be spinning the wheel where we get the Giants. They're going to be pretty limited in what they can do. And that's because they're basically surrounded by the Steelers. This one was close at halftime, but Pittsburgh really pulled away in the second and they're going to get themselves yet another victory as they take New Jersey from the Giants, as well as the GOAT, Lawrence Taylor. So now that both champions of previous imperialisms are out, we are guaranteed to get ourselves a new victor this time around. Pittsburgh is going to be challenged yet again, this time by the Vikings, and Minnesota's really giving them a run for their money. This is a massive third down for the Steel Curtain, and they're going to stand. Chris Carter unable to hold on to that one, and the Steelers are going to have a chance to tie this all up. Roethlisberger is going to be going down. The Purple People Eaters make this a third and 18, setting up the screen and Le'Veon Bell's going nowhere.
nowhere. The Steelers need to convert this fourth and long to avoid being upset. Roethlisberger's going deep, and it's gonna be knocked away! The Vikings pull off the massive upset. So now all of this yellow that Pittsburgh worked so hard to get becomes purple. The Steelers really felt like the favorite to win it all, but I guess that's what happens when you keep playing. And now Jack Lambert is a Minnesota Viking. And that really goes to show that even in imperialism, it is still any given Sunday. The Patriots are gonna be up next, and they're going to continue to expand in New England. And now Tom Brady's a 99 at pretty much everything. I'm curious to see what the Patriots are actually gonna do whenever they play a game. Next up though are the Atlanta Falcons, and they just barely avoid playing the Vikings as they hit the tip of Virginia. And remember, they got Dan Marino now as their quarterback, and there is only one team left now that hasn't been selected by the wheel, and it just passes the Texans. Can the Vikings keep up what they did against the Steelers earlier? Well, they're not gonna have to worry about that right now as they just grab South Dakota. Friend Tarkington is another quarterback who's already at 99, but he does get a few upgrades. And very quickly now, we are headed back to the wheel. Again, we've got ourselves the LA Rams, and they're gonna surround the Seahawks now, claiming Idaho. Kurt Warner is the newest member of the 99 club, and a lot of teams out here just improving their quarterbacks right now. Again, the wheel refuses to land on the Houston Texans, but it will put the Atlanta Falcons against the Minnesota Vikings. And this matchup right here is for about half of the United States. Unfortunately for Atlanta though, they didn't show up, and now the Vikings have by far the most land. And now they add Deion Sanders to their secondary. With just six teams left now, it feels like the Vikings are becoming the favorite. But of course, these are all-time teams, so we can't sleep on any of them. The Rams are going to continue to improve their team before they attack, so they're going to grab Montana. And Kurt Warner continues to get upgraded. I mean, on one of these spins, the Texans have to be selected, but instead, we're going to get the other team from Texas. And that is finally what it takes to get the Texans onto the field. Houston's done a good job of keeping this one close so far, and they're going to make it a four-point game. Scratch that. They're going for two to make it a three-point game, and they've got it. It's all going to come down to whether or not their defense can get a stop on this high-powered Cowboys offense. And that's not a good start there, giving up a quick first down to Emmett Smith. They do hold him to just five yards there. They give it to him again. He's not going anywhere, but what's the flag? Offsides on the defense. That is a killer penalty. And now with only one timeout left, it doesn't look like Houston's going to be able to do much. A valiant effort there by the Texans, but they fall just short. And now J.J. Watt is on the Cowboys. So now every team left on the wheel, we've at least seen them do something, but the Seahawks and Patriots haven't played yet. And instead of getting one of them, the Rams are up yet again. And it looks like we're going to be seeing the Cowboys again as they host the Rams. Less than two minutes to go now, and the Rams currently hold on to an eight-point lead, but the Cowboys are going to be getting the ball back. They have just over a minute to work with, and two timeouts, and Starbaugh's going backwards. Jack Youngblood wreaking havoc in the backfield. Starbaugh is going down again. What a disaster this has been for the Cowboys. Starbaugh does get this pass off, but it's overthrown and picked off. The Rams take care of business here in Jerry World as they knock off the Dallas Cowboys and improve one of the weaker parts of their team, their secondary. We are now down to the final four, and two of these teams haven't even played yet. I'm not even going to bother spinning the arrow here, though. The Seahawks have to play the Rams. And this one's shaping up to be another great game. Wilson downfield is nearly picked, and that's going to bring up third down. Sending the heat is the Rams. They're not going to get there. Wilson's going to take off and run. He's got himself the first. Just over a minute left to go. Russell Wilson, he wants the win on this drive. He is under some pressure, and Aaron Donald gets him. This front four for the Rams is absolutely vicious. They can't get there on this play, though, and Russ gets the pass off. Another third down for Seattle. Off of the play fake. Wilson, he's going to take off and run this one yet again. He lost the football, but the Seahawks do recover. And with 10 seconds left, the Seahawks tie it up. And we've got ourselves yet another another overtime matchup. The Rams are going to get the football first to start off overtime. Warner downfield. He's got a big play. That's going to get them close to field goal range. But of course, they don't want to settle for a field goal. They want to win this one on this drive. But there's going to be a fumble on the play. Bobby Wagner forced it out and the Seahawks recover. Look away, Saints fans. That's Jared Cook fumbling in a big spot. And all the Seahawks need is a field goal, but they can't even convert the third down. And the Rams are going to get themselves a second chance in overtime. Pass is going to be picked though. Cam Chance game winning pick six the Seahawks win unbelievable just trying to dump that one off in the flat Warner is picked off and the Seahawks pull off the upset what a turn of events for the Seahawks knocking out the Rams and taking Aaron Donald. So that's going to leave just three teams remaining, and the Patriots could either expand or go take on the Vikings. And I guess Tom Brady isn't good enough yet because they're just going to take Maine. And I'm starting to run out of ways to improve Tom Brady. Any of these teams could attack right now, or they could just choose to expand. And let's see what the Seattle Seahawks
Hawks choose to do. They're also going to expand, avoiding Minnesota and grabbing North Dakota, and Russell Wilson is the only quarterback remaining who isn't to 99. Looks like these teams are just preparing for battle right now. Let's see what the Seahawks want to do. Looks like they want Russell Wilson to be a 99 overall as that hits the panhandle of Oklahoma. Well, not quite a 99 yet, but close enough. And I'm just sitting here waiting for somebody to do something. And what are the Vikings going to choose to do? They're going to be going out west, which of course puts them against the Seahawks. And whoever wins this one will be playing the Patriots in the championship. Big third down right now for the Vikings on the outskirts of field goal range. And that's going to make it a little bit easier. This will be about a 50 yard attempt. The kick is up and it's just through. Russell Wilson has a minute 22 to work with to get the Seahawks into field goal range. He's going to scramble here and pick up the first down. That's going to bring us under one minute remaining. Russ throws over the middle. It's going to be caught and pick up about 10, but they've got to pick up the tempo here. Off the play fake, Russ over the middle. He's got it and more inside of field goal range. And ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we're going to be going to another overtime game. The Seahawks are going to get the ball to start off overtime. Russ firing that one downfield for Doug Baldwin. Baldwin to the races. He's going to go to the distance on the first play of overtime. The Seahawks are headed to the championship. Shades of Tim Tebow here in Seattle as the Vikings are eliminated. The Vikings find themselves on the wrong side of history again, and Russell Wilson's got himself a new favorite target. We are down to just two teams remaining. Whoever the wheel does not land on will be getting home field advantage, so that means the Seahawks are traveling to Foxborough. So here we are, the championship game between two teams that have barely played. But unfortunately, I think that means the Patriots are nice and fresh while the Seahawks have just come off playing a couple of games, and they're down by three possessions with under two minutes left to go. Wilson looking to throw, and he just gets that pass off. That does stop the clock with a minute 26 left to go, but I don't think it's going to matter. And in an imperialism that was filled with so many great games, it's a shame the championship was a dud. And after doing absolutely nothing the entire time, the Patriots are going to be champions. 24-6 is your final score here in Foxborough. And after all that, the Seahawks are eliminated. And the New England Patriots are champions of all-time NFL imperialism. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're new here, subscribing is always appreciated, as is leaving a like and a comment on the video. Let me know down below future videos you'd like to see, whether it's NFL imperialism or something else. Again, if you guys made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, this has been Jeffrey.